This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everyone. This is Casey Conlon. I'm the Library Sustainability Coordinator at the Mid Hudson Library System. Thank you for coming. Today, we're going to talk about the sexual harassment prevention policy and training tools that we've put together here at Mid Hudson for you all to use in your libraries. Um, we wanted to save you all some time by gathering together some of the relevant parts of the law that apply to you as libraries. Um, I know that you all are busy, very busy people, and so I'm glad you came today. We're just going to give you a quick look at what we have. It's not very hard to start implementing, and you can do it um, at almost any size library. Uh, the things that you're going to need to complete the training or to have the policy in effect are really just um, staff, uh, a, computer, a computer that's connected to the internet, and the training and feedback form, which we're going to show you. Most of the things that are coming in and affecting this training and feedback form and these policies are from the labor law, section 201G, which deals with the prevention of sexual harassment. And if you want to get any of the resources that we're going to talk about today, you can access them at the link, which is at the bottom of this slide, and then the lower right corner of every slide. So it's http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash mhls capital S capital H capital P. And the capitals are important here. You can also get to it by searching on our website at midhudson.org. So today we're going to go over the policy, which we've adopted and modified just very, very small modification from New York State. Uh, the complaint form, which also comes from New York State the vendor and third party form, uh, which is not specifically required in the law, but something that it seems like kind of gray on. So you can use it if you like with your vendors and third parties. And then the training and feedback form, which is gonna be the thing that you need to do the training, which is the biggest part of this new law. So if you were wondering if you would get to go home early from this webinar, if maybe this policy and this law didn't apply to you, this law applies to every employer in New York state uh, you have to adopt the policy and you have to do the training and they have to meet the minimum standards, which we're, we're going to go over. So these are the minimum standards that your policy must meet. Uh, prohibit sexual harassment consistent with guidance issued by the Department of Labor in, consult in consultation with the Division of Human Rights. Provide examples of prohibited conduct that would constitute unlawful sexual harassment. Include information concerning the federal and state statutory provisions concerning sexual harassment, remedies available to victims of sexual harassment, and a statement that there may be other applicable local laws. You have to include a complaint form, and you have to include a procedure for the timely and confidential investigation of complaints that ensures due process for all parties. You have to inform all parties of their rights of redress and all available forums for adjudicating sexual harassment complaints administratively and judicially. Judicious, ju judicially sorry. Uh, clearly state that sexual harassment is considered a form of employee misconduct and that si sanctions will be enforced against individuals engaging in sexual harassment and against supervisory and managerial personnel who knowingly allow such behavior to continue and clearly state that retaliation against individuals who complain of sexual harassment or who testify or assist in any investigation or proceeding involving sexual harassment is unlawful. So that is a lot of stuff. Your policy may already do that, or you may want to add things to your policy, but you can also go to the website that we mentioned is at the link in the lower right, and you can download the model sexual harassment prevention policy complaint form and vendor and third party form that New York State has provided. The New York State policy, as you might imagine, meets all the requirements that we just discussed. And I think it's probably, it's vetted by lawyers. I think that's why they put it out there for all of us. So I think the easiest thing is to go to our website and download that form. If you wanna make small modifications to it, you can. Just keep in mind those minimum requirements that we just discussed before. So when you download the, if you click any of the links there in the red box, you'll download the relevant policy or forms. And so when you download the policy, the model policy, this is what you'll get. And this comes right from New York State. I think there was one little typo of like uh, plurals that I changed, but you can add in things if you think you need to. You might wanna talk to your lawyer about it after you do that. The easiest thing would be to take it right from the state. So you'll see that they have helpfully added in places where you can put your library's name. You see where it says employer name, you'll probably wanna put in the name of your library. 
and you see there's also instances of employers employer names uh, so it's possessive uh, down there so you're going to want to change that out to you know your library the other thing that you're going to look going to want to look out in this look out for in this policy is um, in some areas you're going to have what's in the red box is the name of the appropriate person and in a lot of cases this will probably be the library director and this is the person that the people are going to reach out to if they have complaints about sexual harassment or if they have questions about the policy or sexual harassment so i think the document is maybe eight pages long it's probably worth reading it over i know it's probably dense and you probably wanted to come here so you wouldn't have to read it but i suggest you read it before you adopt it or the board adopts it uh, just to be familiar with it and so maybe as you're going through it you can update these little highlighted areas and correct the formatting so here are some of the uh, some of the requirements and how it meets them in the policy, just to again familiarize you with it a little bit. So here is them providing examples of prohibited conduct that would constitute unlawful sexual harassment. So they've articulated here what is not allowed. Um, here we have them including information concerning the federal and statutory provisions and informing employees of their rights of redress that are beyond the library. And you see it gets down into the state human rights law. And so this is important to inform them that even beyond just talking to that person that we talked about earlier, whether it's a director or an HR manager, they have other rights and there's other laws that protect them and other agencies that they can go to. And those are listed in the model policy. You also have to include a procedure for a timely and confidential investigation of the complaints that ensures due process for all parties. So that's in here and it discusses how you're going to do the investigations and you also have to clearly state that sexual harassment is considered a form of employee misconduct and that sanctions will be enforced against individuals engaging in sexual harassment and against supervisory and managerial personnel who knowingly allow such behavior to continue it's hard to imagine why a policy wouldn't have this but now this is part of the law that the policies must have this for all employers in new york state so this is just a part to be aware of. Um, the other thing that you have to do is you have to clearly state, and many policies do, but now it's part of the requirements of the law, it clearly state that retaliation against individuals who complain of sexual harassment or testify or assist in any investigation or proceeding involving sexual harassment is unlawful. And so really just if you do complain about sexual harassment, that cannot be held against you. Uh, as you can imagine, that would be a pretty bad situation if you could complain about it and people could you know, fire you for that or, you know, uh, limit whatever kind of advantages you might get at your job. So those are some of the requirements of the policy. The other document that's on that page that we discussed is the complaint form. And so here you'll see there's more spaces for you to fill in for name of employer. You probably put in your library and then, you know, down halfway down the page, you have who you're supposed to contact and how people are supposed to submit their complaints, whether they're supposed to submit them in writing or in person or by email. I guess you'll want to put in here all the different ways that people can let the necessary person or the relevant person know that they think they've experienced or observed sexual harassment. So the third party and contractor area is a little bit gray. This is from the state's FAQ page. Uh, what policy, if any, must be provided to contractors, subcontractors, vendors, and consultants? And so you don't have to provide any policy to independent contractors, but it's not a good idea. It's not a bad idea to provide them with the policy. And so you can, as you, if you read here, you'll see you can be liable for. Uh, if somebody from a third party comes in and harasses somebody in your workplace and you don't do anything about it, or if they harass, you know, a patron or something like that, I suppose. So to limit your liability, we made up a form for you. And this is also on the website and is the contract require the contractor's requirement for sexual harassment prevention policy. And a lot of this text is from the, uh, model policy that we looked at first. And then below there's a little bit more and it says that there's a little signature on the bottom and it says that by signing this, you say that you have trained your organization or your staff in accordance with the law that we were just talking about. Again, every employer in New York is supposed to do this. So it shouldn't really be something that you have to say, but I guess if somebody was coming from Connecticut or something like that, you could be liable if 
they hadn't received this training. So again, these three documents are available towards the top of the page. I tried to make it as easy as possible for you all to grab these things while also explaining what they're for on the web page. Just uh, pop over to the web page at the link in the lower right, and you can grab these policies and these relevant forms. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is the training. So who has to get the training? So all employees have to get the training. And I think it's important to note, I don't know if we've thought about this, uh, the director should also undergo the training if you're going to use the model that we talk about using the training and feedback form. If the director were administering the training, like leading like a classroom kind of discussion with an interactive training, then we were told that that might satisfy their training requirement. But if they're not going to be leading training and distributing the forms that we show, then they should also view the videos and complete the forms that we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, trustees and volunteers, uh, this is a little bit of a gray area. We had um, our compensation consultant uh, who was Sherry. She came and she talked to us and she's on our webinar at the web page at the lower right down there. And her opinion was that trustees and volunteers should get the training because they represent your workplace. And you'll see here in FAQ from the state, um, so you're encouraged to provide the policy and training to anyone providing services in your workplace, which sounds like volunteers, people who run the bookstore, and trustees. At Mid-Hudson, we have decided to have our trustees undergo the training because we rec recognize that the trustees uh, are in a quid pro quo sexual harassment potential situation wherein they you know, control somebody's, you know, whether somebody would get fired or reviewed well or poorly, and they could, you know, somebody on the board could, uh, you know, sexually harass somebody in exchange for something. So we wanted them to get the training so that we could say they understood that that is not something that they should do. So who should get the training? Probably everybody who does anything at your library. If you have a lawyer who advises you against that, then take your legal counsel's opinion. Uh, this is our opinion at Mid-Hudson and that we got from our compensation consultant who we hired to talk to us about this stuff. So another key point is when. The due date for everyone to have this training, all your employees, all the people we just talked about, is October 9th, 2019. And after that, you will have to redo the training annually. So we'll work on updating our forms if anything changes. This is a new law, so there might be uh, legal cases that change the law or that clarify things in the law. Um, but we'll try to keep up to date on that and keep you all up to date on that. But uh, in the law now, it says that employees all must be trained annually. And so you can make that you know, a calendar year or whatever is easiest for you. And anybody who's hired newly, you are supposed to train, it says in the FAQ, as soon as possible. So possible. That's a relevant thing. So whatever that means to you and your organization, however fast you can get them trained. So the other thing, what's involved in the training? And so here we have more minimum requirements that are in the law from the state. And so the training must be interactive, which we're going to go over, and it must include an explanation of sexual harassment consistent with guidance issued by the Department of Labor in consultation with the Division of Human Rights include examples of conduct that would constitute unlawful sexual harassment, include information concerning the federal and state statutory provisions concerning sexual harassment and remedies available to victims of sexual harassment, and include information concerning employees' rights of redress and all available forums for adjudicating complaints, and include information addressing conduct by supervisors and any additional responsibilities for such supervisors. So again, we've kind of lucked out. That's a lot of stuff if you had to make that all on your own, which you're welcome to do as long as it meets these requirements. But if you go to the Mid-Hudson website, which you'll find in the link in the lower right of the page here, uh, you'll see the training and feedback form, which is a Word document, which you can download. And similar to the model policy and complaint form and third-party harassment form, you can customize. You can insert your library name at the top. And then all the uh, require, many of the requirements that we discussed before, except for the interactive part, are taken care of in these two videos. So these links, like the link in the lower right, are bit.ly links, so they are case sensitive. But you can click on these links if you have the form electronically, 
or you can type them into a browser, into the location bar, to the address bar, and it'll come up. Just make sure you watch the cases there. That last letter in the first one is a lowercase j. So if you type these in, the sexual harassment videos will come up and in the two videos, they will address all the requirements that we saw before, except for the interactive part. The interactive part is taken care of with the second side of the page. If you print this out two-sided, the document, the training and feedback form, this is one piece of paper. And uh, you'll see you have another insert library name that you should take care of before you distribute this to your staff or trustees or volunteers. But at the top, uh, the trainee will put their name and the date that they watch the videos and that'll help you for record keeping purposes. And then they will sign that they watch the videos and that they uh, received your policy. So that's a good acknowledgement to have that they have your sexual harassment policy. And then there's a couple questions uh, that are addressed in the video and in the policy where we ask them to answer the questions correctly about if something's harassment or what they should do if they see the harassment. And then the last part, the last question that's in the red box there is after viewing the training videos, they can ask any other questions that they have about sexual harassment. So that's kind of the interactive part. And you should follow up with people if they have questions, of course, about this. So that is most of what we were going to do today. We can talk about more info. If you have questions, you can, of course, email me or call me, cconlin at midhudson.org. You can see it right there on the screen. And the New York State website does have a lot of FAQs if you want to poke around there. That's uh, kind of a long link, but if you Google New York State sexual harassment policies, uh, it usually comes up. You want the newyork.gov page. And so we're going to switch off the recording now, and then you can feel free to ask any questions that you have.